All right, folks, you're watching the BTSL Light, and oh no, everything's moved because of the uh, TV2 tournament. So I'll 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 fix <laughs> I'll fix all this in just a sec. It looks awkward sitting up there like that. I know. Uh, Game paused. Or maybe I'll do it right here real quick. It'll be the quickest, fastest way to do it. So let's just uh, whoop, whoop, uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. It's a little bit awkward because I'm gonna have to be the one who unpauses this. And what's why is that locked? Don't be locked. Scrolling browser source son. All right, I gotta wait for Lucira. Game resumed. Unfortunately, if you guys don't know, if you pause the game, only the ref can unpause. I hate it. That's a dumb feature. I understand why it's there. Don't like it one bit. But anyways, you're watching the BTSL Lite. It's kind of a bridge between our downtime and the new BTSL season, which we have since announced. Season one, already over $10,000 in that match arena prize pot and there's more to come. More on that in a bit. Spawning here in the bottom right to kick off this best of three, we have the blue Zerg Lucira with his opponent in the upper left, the North American God, Kilazur. I'm going to try and keep the dank Maymays out of chat, or out of this cast for Kelezer, but I will say, every time I see Kelezer play, I'm never let down. Sometimes he loses, and it's unfortunate, but I feel like he always puts up a good fight. And Lucir's not a bad first round opponent for him to come up against. Lucir's actually been playing more and more in the Weekly Cups. We've seen him in the Alima League, and the BTSLs, of course. And, <clears throat> I, I don't mean this in an insulting way, not the best Zerg in Korea. So that's why I really like him as the start. Like if this had been Solar versus Kelazer right off the bat, I'd feel a little bad because it might not, it might not be a fair fight type thing. I really don't know what type of shape Kelazer's in after his uh, recent performances, but he's he's making it far enough into these events that he's still noteworthy. And I think that him versus Lucier is a good start. That being said, though, what's your prize for winning this best of three? Oh, you face off against what is probably innovation in the round of eight. So, best of luck to both players. But to answer some questions really quick, people were asking, is Kelazur in Korea? Uh, yes, he's been in there for a while training, sitting at that house. And I think, uh, I don't know what his long-term plans are, but these guys have been using a lot of their WCS trips to come and go. So for example, you know, you WCS will fly you to and from their events when you qualify in. A lot of folks are using the trips to go to Korea or to come back from Korea. So I don't know what his time frame is gonna look like, but. I know that everyone's really enjoying their time there and getting some really good practice. Are all the games played today? Asks Simply Nemo. Yes, we're going all the way to the finish, boys. We got semifinals, we got grand finals. Uh, there's actually a really awesome prize pool. You can actually see it ticking down here. You guys have already been using the codes. I don't even need to tell you guys to use the codes and y'all are on top of this, but there is a code you can use the BTSL light, or excuse me, light three, and you can add a dollar to the prize pool for free which means we should have at the very minimum $300 available for prizing. Due to the increase in prize pool as well, we've also created a third and fourth place prize, each worth 10% of the total prize pool. Thanks to you guys who help us use those codes, but also thanks to the, uh, I guess we'll call them the temporary sponsors luck box. Uh, do me a favor guys, type exclamation mark luck box in chat if you want to learn out more about them. We also have a giveaway running with them too that should be uh, ending on the 15th or so of this month. Anyways, Kelly's just done a really nice job being harassing out here. He stops a creep tumor. He almost denies the drone, uh, all with that first Reaper. But unfortunately, the Reaper does go down. The Hellions are a pretty common follow-up, along with the Cloak Banshee. There were some patch changes. A lot of you guys should be aware of them by now, but we will talk about them as we see units come into play. I think the key elements of those changes, though, mostly revolve around the Zerg players, as the Hydras were currently... Uh, I, don't know, I guess nerf is the technical term, but they took the singular upgrade that used to be two upgrades and split them back into two upgrades again for Hydras, kind of messing with their timings now. But regardless of whether Kelezer plays mech or bio, I still think for what we've seen, at least, Hydras are still the core cut part of your composition. You're still looking to go for them regardless of that upgrade split. But uh, a lot of a lot of Zerg people on, uh, on the Twitterverse pretty vocal about not liking that change. Uh, 
As the Hellions dip in, they also dip out. Not taking too much damage. Still waiting to see what Kelloser is going to go into. I'm kind of, I got my fingers crossed a little bit for mech just because I'm a dirty bastard and I love watching mech play. But I do feel like mech's got a better win rate at the moment versus Zerg. Again, I got to see what Kelloser is going to do. This armory could still just be for a Hellbat with the Banshees. I'm, it's smelling like mech. It's looking like mech. We're just really waiting for that second factory to come down to confirm it. Uh, third CC was placed in the wall too. Ooh, I like that. Uh, sometimes when it's in the middle of the wall, you hear a zombie grabbing myself, get quite, uh, pretentious about it. And that's because it really is an awful walling mechanism. But off on the side like that's actually not bad. Banshee wraps in here now, picks up a couple of drones. That spore crawler finishes any second. He knows this too, so he can't stick around for too long. But five drones for almost no damage is not bad. And these hellings are looking for more. There's a couple of roaches, of course, but that's not going to stop this many of the hellings from roasting up that mineral line, given the opportunity. Second factory, boom, finally comes down. And Kelizer is going to be playing mech this game. This now kind of puts the onus on Lucira. I think all Terran players who play mech are playing generically the same right now. There's not a lot of deviations. You know, you're not you're not pumping out mass Thors, Gumiho style. You're typically either going lots of Cyclones and Hellions or lots of tanks and Hellions. And it's up to Lucira to react to that. Some Zerg players just handle this no problem. Uh, some are comfortable using swarm hosts, which ultimately are not that good nowadays. Some go lurkers. Some just stick with the Hydras. It, it really is what Lucira is going to do that'll dictate the pacing of this game now. Because uh, one of the most common things I think we see people do once they realize it's mech and he has just scouted to confirm it is indeed mech, is a fast hive. We're seeing vipers be a pretty good, I guess we'll say, uh, answer to the mech problem. On that note, <clears throat> excuse me, I am curious if uh, ravens will become more and more effective in that regard. Uh, ravens, of course, were changed pretty significantly in this most recent patch, about, uh, it was like half a week ago now. Talk about that if we see it, though. He does start the add infestation pets, so we're going to see the hive tech come out. But the push begins. Three banshees. Remember, you get that one alive from earlier, so it's very little anti-air. Even if the queens shoot down the banshees, which they are appropriately so, the hellbats and the cyclones are still a lot of damage. She just pushes through that roach and lay army like it's nothing at all. Two banshees also sitting over here doing a lot of damage to these roaches. And who cares about the queens of the banshee dynamic if he can't deal with the hellbats and the cyclones? Oh, this is way more dangerous, of course. The banshees getting a little bit too close, getting to that spore crawler, but they're getting the damage done before they go down. They've cleared out a majority of the defenses. Mm, it does look like Lucir is going to hold on to this. Kelloser did a lot of superficial damage. So, quick assessment here is that basically he did a really good job trading army for army value, but that's kind of where it comes to a full stop. Because beyond this, only three workers went down. It was a couple of queens, but they were not important for injecting queens. They were the extra, I'm going to spread some creep queens. And he's already got those tumors out, so he's really no worse for wear. Just maybe missing a couple transfuses off of later fights. Uh, honestly, pretty good hold from Lucira. Uh, Kelzer is going to do a double Thor drop. Now, he's not going mass Thors like I had <laughs> jokingly said earlier. But double Thor drops pretty nice. Uh, Gumiho was the one who really, I, I want to say invented, if not invented, perfected this style. It can get a lot of damage done. And against Roaches too, it's not a problem. These only end up fearing attacks like Hydras because they can shoot the medevacs down. <clears throat> yeah, as you can see, Queens, they just don't hold up. So... He should be able to get this base, in all honesty, even with the roaches coming in like this. Uh, a lot of roaches on their way back. The killer's just going to have to focus this and just pick up and get the heck out of there. But this is a nice base snipe, because this really shouldn't cost him anything for it. Quick pick up, and he gets out of dodge. Nicely done by Kelizer. While this goes on, I'm not sure what we missed. I'm terrible. Maybe he has a Bane drop in the main or something, but seven SCVs just died. Um... Oh, there's not even a bailing nest. I guess some links just got in somewhere. So focus watching Kelizer do Thor things. That's my bad, folks. But uh, despite the SCV losses, still losing a base for Lucir is going to hurt. Both players are an extraordinarily large amount of workers at the moment, though. So 73 for Kelizer, 81 for Lucira. Nobody's really hurting for income right now. And in fact, even if we check those charts, yeah, I guess Kelizer is doing so good. Doing so good. Uh, single target mode on the Thor allows them to do bonus damage to armored, so we see that Overlord go down pretty quick. That clears out the vision. Uh, there are Spore Crawlers set up, but only one, and it's not covering the Mineral Line at the moment, so the Liberate comes in to set up. Oh, this is some sick metagaming. 
If Kelizer was actually paying attention and didn't just shift Q that, he would have killed so many drones. But the Spore Crawlers do a great job denying both of those. However, Thor's go back in for another drop and another base looking like it's going to go down. Hydra's... Well, maybe not, actually. With the Hydra's out, he's got to pull back from this. Again, the Thors aren't going to care too much about the Roaches, but the Medivacs have to care about the Hydra's. Looks like Hellion's also ran by to the bottom left, tried to roast the toast some drones, but there's not that many to actually be roasted or make toasted. Uh, does he have blue flame? Blue flame's done. No transformation servos. In fact, Kelizer in general is kind of a little bit low on the upgrades. Hmm, we'll see if that ends up hurting him. Does he only have the one armory? He does. So he's focusing on weapon upgrades for now. While this goes on though, we do have Vipers coming on deck as predicted. These are really good abducts, blinding clouds, they help out a ton, but man, there's a lot of blue flame Hellions. Tanks get set up here, but as long as the Hellions take out those Hydras, I think Thors and Tanks can easily make mincemeat of the rest. It's tough. Lucira has to not take a fight right now. It's very important he waits till he has these Vipers out. Any fight he takes, he's gonna lose that fight. He's down in upgrades. He's down in overall supply. And the type of supply your favorite skills are too. As he spreads out his tanks. Now when those Vipers come out, blinding clouds aren't really going to be an option. It's going to have to be abducts. Which, yeah, you abduct a tank. It's still going to get a shot off as it flies into your army. Which never feels very good. But, ah, uh, posturing now. We got those out. Thor's also going to get some good shots off of the Vipers. Viking gets the executing shot too. Blinding clouds go down, but they're not going to last that long. Couple tanks only. A lot of tanks not in those blinding clouds. So Sears going to push in for this. I don't know if he can actually do it. He says, I can't either. He's just going to tap out. GG. Game goes to Kelazur. Not too shabby for this turn. But it is loser's pick. So, uh, next map. Sira? Oh, so let me leave that chat channel. Since we're not using it today. I just realized, though, with the way the bracket has been seated, like... Oh, guys, we could... I don't want to discount the players here, right? I'm just going dream scenario. First off, if you type exclamation mark brackets in chat, you'll be able to follow along and see what I'm talking about here. But possibly here, we could have innovation versus solar in a semifinals on the top side. Bottom side could be hero versus rogue. And then I don't care. Any combination of those four players for the grand finals would tickle me pink as far as my Korean desires go. But it'd be really, really cool if one of the foreigners competing, like Euthermo or Kelizer, got far enough in the tournament to at least get to prize money, to much less take the grand finals. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, do you uh, uh, do you get replay? Every, do you get every replay as a sub from this tournament? Yes. Hello, SV. Every time we cast something that we have created, uh, we send out replay packs to our subscribers. Usually about an hour after the tournament completes. So. Uh, if you guys are enjoying the games, if you really want to study these moves or cast these matches yourself, uh, just consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, subscriptions are, by the way, what allows us to fuel making stuff like this happen, too. Like, right now, we're kind of lucky because we got some sponsorship stuff, but the initial $100 prize pool, that just comes out of the sub money from you guys subbing to the channel. So, lots of cool things come from subs. You get benefits like replays, emotes, we get to make more tournament content, and hopefully everybody at the end of the day enjoys but they're ready. It's Neon Violet Square. It's map number two. See you guys in game. Alright, so I said I'd do some shoutouts, and then we got really carried away with that first game going so bloody quick. Do the intros. I'm gonna get caught up on some shoutouts, and uh, I'll take some cues from chat if you guys got them. But for now, on top left, we got the blue Zerg Lucira. Down one at the moment against his opponent. In the bottom right, it's Root Gaming's Kelazur. Very nice game one win, and I love that he did it with mech. Uh, but someone in chat first and foremost was asking, uh, where's the main BTSL? There's a big announcement on Team Liquid. There's also information on the Maturino page for it. If you just type in exclamation mark BTSL in chat, you'll see that there. I will announce, by the way, I've just finished squaring away. We're going to be running a BTSL amateur series over the next few months. This means if you are diamond and below, platinum and below, and so forth, we're going to be hosting tournaments just for you. And unlike in the past where we only paid prize money to the, well, not prize, but prize 
to the first place player of one hour of coaching from your favorite pro. We're also going to be having second place prizes provided by Blizzard, be it through co-op commander codes of your choice, maybe some posters. Honestly, we don't know what the second place prizes will be. It's just going to be like whatever they give us. But first place prize will still be an hour of coaching with your favorite person. Uh, now, first off, uh, I said, no, at first, that is like second or third off, man. My brain's still waking up. Uh, big thank you if you're tuning in. Napacom, thank you for the 35 months, dude. This is hello. I'm back. Panic Switch also graces us with a 43 month resub. Thank you very much for that panic, my dude. And then just recently, during that first game, but we missed it because of the hype, uh, MSR206 was a brand new sub to the channel. Thank you for joining the Base Trade Brigade, man. And uh, that should hopefully cover it. If I missed anybody, just be, feel free to holler. I don't do it on purpose. But a lot of people type in the Matrino codes in chat. Yeah, so again, uh, you can see the scrolling text on the screen. We have up to $100 in free codes you can redeem, guys, by using the code LIGHT3. Already up to $230, we should have a minimum of $300 by the time the cast is done, if I've done my job and you guys have saved esports. But also, another uh, sub coming in just now. Thank you very much for the 23 months, seven year Twitch. This is Rifkin. You continue to kill it as I'm creeping up on two years. My dude, thank you very much. Also, thank you for sticking around for two years. Most people cringe out by, uh, you know, year one. <laughs> Anyways, uh, folks are asking where Zombie Group today. Zombie Group's actually quite sick. Uh, I, I could have probably bullied and guilt tripped her into casting with me, but. If you guys don't know, she's just recently got done a bunch of traveling, coming back from Dream Act Leipzig, and yeah, she's got a bit of a travel sickness. So I think she was playing Final Fantasy VI. Uh, VI oh, Final Fantasy VI. Mind blown. Uh, she was playing Final Fantasy VI on stream the other night. Uh, I think kind of just a chill thing. I don't know. I've, I've been telling her, like, you gotta drink water, you gotta get that chicken noodle soup going, you gotta get better so you can get back on the cast, but... Unfortunately, for the BT, uh, Base Trade TV fans tuning in, there's going to be another small awkward down period. As IEM Pyeongchang starts this week, there's not going to be a lot that we can run while that's going on. A lot of players are there, but most importantly, the broadcasting conflicts. So I'm going to be doing a lot of streaming on my channel over this week. But once the BTSL launches next week, oh boy, guys, we're in full swing. Four days of the week, guaranteed StarCraft 2 content. At the moment, and this might change because there's some stuff I can't talk about on stream, but uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Gonna have a show scheduled for four out of the seven days of the week. Hopefully you guys will be looking forward to that, but enough about that. We got Kelzer coming across the map with a Hellion attack. Yeah, I feel it pokes the hatchery, not a lot to be done. Does alert that the attack's coming, though. Doesn't get there in time to deny the creep tuber. But it's gonna be Hellbats, similar to last game. And that push last game, by the way, was... oh. It looks so much better than it ended up being. I really don't know how to assess it. Uh, also, ooh, try to make sure there's no scouting. He doesn't want Lucier to know that there is no third base. He wants him to confirm that this is a uh, question mark as far as the attack goes. But Roach is once again out of Lucira. I mean, he's done this kind of blindly. I'm imagining Lucira's played against Kelleser a fair amount of times on ladder if he's getting used to these attacks this early, this quickly. But uh, this comes with Marines, and this is not fun to deal with if you've just got Queen's Lings. But with the roaches, I think he might be able to hold. Uh, Hellbats are not so good against roaches unless they can really get get them. But oh, getting off creep to be one way to do it. Nice pickup saving those hellbats. Nice. Uh, Kelzer actually doesn't end up risking anything for the attack. Decides to withdraw. This isn't so bad. It'll give him time to heal up those hellbats and maybe go back in with full force. But Lucira has quite a few units to defend with, so I don't think deflecting an attack will be an issue. Still though, Kelezer will be pretty satisfied having seen these roaches, just knowing that Kelezer, or excuse me, that Luzira is not getting away with a ton of drones while this goes on. Also, once again, the odd spore crawl. I love this. So, <laughs> every time we cast a live, we make fun of a live missile turrets because they're placed like this and they end up being pretty pointless a lot of the time. But Lucira is just almost blind countering these, these liberties because Kelezer is doing a lot of shift clicking, which is fine. All Terran players do. But it's kidding, his Liberator is killed. Also, nice attempt to do some heli drops in the main, but while this goes on, he is going to have to defend his natural. I think he's got the means to do it, though. These are only roaches. So high ground should be easily held here. Uh, the attempted heli run by was pretty sick, though. If, if Lucira had actually brought his whole army, those could have run to that mineral line and done a lot of damage. But Banshee's out. She's going to make sure to clean up the roaches, too. Playing it real safe here as the Liberator comes back home. Of course, it's that damage Liberator from earlier. Get pushed off. 
More shots coming in here. Not getting that many SCVs. I'm not getting much scouting out of this either. I'm not sure that this was worth it necessarily for Lucira, but he does cut down a lot of the units Kelzer had to maybe do another attack with. You know, you're missing, what, what was that, like six Hellbats, five Marines. That could have been another push pretty easily. Uh, by the way, while I'm not as hyped about it, because it's now expected, uh, we do have Mech coming at Kelzer once more. That push last game was brutal. The tanks were just unstoppable. I think that uh, Lucira had the right idea. You know, we saw him, his Viper timings were just barely off. Maybe a little bit quicker, maybe a little bit faster to the draw. And that wouldn't have been a problem. Uh, Kells are also moving towards a third base. I do not love this third base. I see a lot of people taking this. And I understand as far as if you're concerned about attacks coming down the middle of the map. But just too often, a couple Ravagers, a couple of Hydras, they just set themselves up here and shoot your workers. Same thing can be said about the Zerg player too, right? Like you put a couple of Siege Tanks up here, Hellions even reach that Mineral lines. It's just, it can go really badly. I, I'm not a big fan of that base. But I guess it is better than your little half base that's in the back corner. Uh, Queens won't be able to deal with this attack on their own. Bane, she's actually doing a lot of damage. Overseer comes out, Ooh, one more shot would have finished the Queen, but he does pull the rest of them. So Kelzer is going to have to back out of there. That's the right call. Man, that queen was seriously on like one HP though. Feels regen, man. Can we uh, can we regen lock queens? Stop that regeneration BS while they're in combat. Uh, Thor's is also coming out of Kelzer. I'm not sure those Thor's will get the same effectiveness as before, but they're always cool to see. And when you know your opponent doesn't have Hydras, you're gonna have some leeway to just maneuver around with them. Ooh, actually, if you uh, if you put a couple of Banshees on one side and a couple of Thors on the other, this could get a lot of damage done. But once again, these Spore Crawlers out of Lucira, like, credit where it's due, these will stop most things coming in from auto-attacking. He can't just shift Q past this like normal. He'll take a lot of damage if that's the case. It's such a small detail, but honestly, like, the, the Spore Crawler being here versus here is the difference of, like, Liberators getting into doing damage. The difference of these Banshees being able to be shift queued, And the reason you shift Q isn't because you're lazy, but because you want to be focusing your micro elsewhere, like on said Thors. So, Banshees come in, they recognize there's a bit of a problem. They can kill this Queen pretty easily. And if they just float above the Spore Crawler, they could get a bit deeper, pick up some drones, but we'll put them in range of the Hydras. Also, I guess, taking a bit of damage on those Banshees. It's flying past with the Liberator. Oh, no way. This position he might screw. No, it's not enough damage. You need upgrades to one-shot the Hydras. All right, it feels bad, man. Also, forget what I said about the Hydra thing for a moment here, because that comes with the brain of mind thinking about tank splash damage being factored in, too. Uh, regardless, Thor's get up here to the main. Sport colors are a bit scary. A couple Hydras on the backside, too, so the medevacs really have to be careful how they maneuver. Getting in and picking up these Thors for an escape is not looking like it's going to be an easy option, but he does go in. A bit risky, pulls it off. Uh, Kelzer, by the way, did take his back corner base. Now, for a mech player, this is not such a bad constellation base because you do get full gases. It's just half the minerals, which is not, not always such a good feeling. But maybe he'll lift up a base, make a planetary on the top side. I don't know, but oh, he's got to be careful with these medevacs. Oh, I can't believe she got out of there. You know what? That's karma for the queen earlier. One for one. That's three health on this medevac. Whew. Uh, this upgrade, a lot of you guys won't be familiar with seeing too. That's the Groove Spines upgrade. This is the ranged upgrade Hydras get. As I said before, they uh, had their upgrades split, so it's no longer both built into muscular augments. But, oh, that's what I'm talking about with this base. Never fun to deal with. He saw this coming a mile away with the creep. His army was just out of position, and Hellizer roasts up eight drones, blue flame styles. Not bad. Now, I'm not sure if he saw the Vipers. He's going to have an idea that the timing's here. Whoa. Wait, did you guys see that? Was he able to see it through the fog of war? Or was that an observer bug we just saw? What in the heck? Uh, I'm in a heap of trouble. I think it was, because he saw... Uh, if you check Kelly's vision, he sees the Evo Chamber dead. What? What? All right, uh, Thor's gonna get some really good shots off. Those are some great blinding clouds, though. But the Blue Flame Hellions wrap around the Hydras and say, thank you for lining up to go for the tanks. Oh my God, he filters into death. And the tank line remains mostly unscathed. So easy for Kelzer to pump out four Hellions at a time. Send this to the front lines, replacing that. But it's so difficult to replace the tanks because they're so expensive. So not losing the tanks is a really big deal. He lost the Vipers for that. Kelzer's not left with much, but he's left with an untouchable amount of army that's left over. Oh my god, Lucir is definitely going to lose this gold base. 
positioning here is also going to favor Kelzer quite a bit because for Lucier to engage, he's going to have to funnel in through these tiny little neon violet squares. If he comes in from the top side, the tanks are set up. Good to go. Blue Flame Heli is protected. No stakes. This looks bad for Lucier. kelzer has got such an easy fight on his hands. I love that the Vikings land actually adding a little bit of fodder, keeping the tanks alive even longer. You got Smart Servos coming out too. It's going to help out a little bit, but Kelzer's front line is looking a little bit weak. A little bit worse for wear. That was a really expensive engagement for Lucier. I mean, look at this, uh, the, the resources lost, right? Credit that to the army graph here, too. But Kellis is the one who's ended up maybe not the best spot for this. The turrets are kind of wasted, but they were used to help in case more vipers were coming in. Uh, his tanks could slow crawl in this direction. I don't know, I'd personally like it if he went in from the south side, but either way, as long as he's got good positioning with the tanks, it might not be a problem. He's coming up on plus three upgrades as well. So he's gonna have that damage. He's missing uh, the armor. That's only coming up on plus two, of course, but uh, what's his follow-up to this? They'll just go in a lot of tanks, get a lot of Hellions out, more Vikings to deal with the assumed Vipers. Actually, that's a bit of a downside, I guess. Well, he did land the Vikings. He kept those tanks alive. He did lose the anti-air to shut down the Vipers should they come back into play. But Lucera's making a pretty smart choice here with the Roach just to go for the counter. There's no planetary to hold on to back at home, but this tank in this Thor is not gonna hold up. They go down pretty quickly, actually. STV's just pulled uh, by some time there in the natural base. Is that mean production is coming out? He should. Oh no! Oh no! He's gonna pull the STVs back into it. That tank needs to set up. That tank needs to siege. This is really bad for Killazer. He's rushing back home, but he can't abandon the tanks on the front line. This is a tough decision to make, and it's not looking good for our Red Terran. But tanks are set up here, so while he's gonna take a lot of damage, it is limited. These roaches can't push it much further than this. But picking off these depots is not bad either. That's gonna supply block a mech heavy player. Meanwhile, back on the other side of the field, the war wages on. He's been slow creeping his way to the front lines. As we see uh, a couple of the ducks coming out of these Vipers, trying to pick off the Vikings. Once the Vikings are all gone, that's going to give a lot of freedom to do abducts on the tanks or uh, blinding clouds and push in. Uh, 32 SUVs ended up dying in total for this. Kills are not in such a great spot, but at least he didn't get supply blocked through all this. Or turrets coming down, a little bit of repair here and there. Oh, that's kind of cute to see. Roach should be able to pick out these turrets for free at least. Viking's still looking for those Vipers. Where are those Vipers? I know he's got a couple of them out. Looks like they're right here on the front lines. Goes back in, but a little bit too late. The turret didn't complete either. Roach is on the backside, distracting a lot of tank shots. A little bit of friendly fire too. Looks like Lucier is going to break Kelleser's front line. Uh, both players now getting pretty close as far as resources lost. Lucier's still hurting here a little bit more. Hmm. A little bit worried. That, that counterattack from the Roaches out of Lucera was brilliant. It's the one thing that shut Kelleser down the most, but now his army's maybe out of position? Lucera's forced to come back home and chase these Hellions because you cannot let Blue Flame Hellions go. They get to your middle line and everything starts dying. I do like the attempt to pull the drones and split. Uh, Hellions are getting caught up on these lings, so we'll shut this down, but not before eight drones die. Uh, Grand Total Worker kill this game, not that crazy, especially when you compare it to the actual army loss out of both players. 62 roaches, 45 hydras, you know, the little things. Uh, it does look like, though, especially with that gold base getting reestablished now, Lucier is going to have no problem with the money game. So replacing these losses should be fairly easy for him. He's got a lot of hatcheries. Uh, he's still not taking this back base, too. Let's not forget, this is always a nice fallback if you need it later on. But hydras and lings, man. It's pretty much the bread and butter of Zerg. Doesn't matter how hard you nerf them. Doesn't matter how you split those upgrades. You're still gonna see Hydras and Langs. I do like the eventual follow-up to this, by the way. Uh, moving towards what I'm sure is going to be a Greater Spire at a point. There's also enough Vikings in the sky to start one-shotting these Vipers. So if you can just knock those out before they really get in the fight, then those tanks don't have anything to worry about. But the second the blinding clouds come in, those Hydras push, and Kelezer's numbers are not holding up right now. They're just not looking good enough to take a good fight. More Blue Flame Hellions do some run-by action, though I like this. Lucira is going to be driven... Oh, he's going to go back over this, okay. I wasn't sure if he was going to be pulled back entirely. I was a little bit worried about that. Uh, and killing, honestly, killing some of the larvae at this point might be more worth it than the drones. I don't know, it's hard to say, but... Shades up for some Hydras on the way. Gotta be paying attention though, Kelleser. You gotta get this Vipers before it's too late. Goes in for the fight. Oh, he gets a lot of the blinded clouds off. This doesn't look good for Kelleser. He repositions some of the tanks. Couple of Liberators setting up too to help keep the Hydra kill low, but they're pushing in. Few tanks remain. Blinded clouds are gone. Can he hold? This is gonna be a tough as hell fight, but looks like Lucera is gonna be the one to withdraw. I think there's a chance that had he pushed in with that concave, maybe he could have made this work. 
But the fact that he pulls back for sure guarantees he can get Vipers out for round two. 10 Roaches, 11 Hydras. Easy Remax coming out of Lucira. So, yeah, Kelzer holds on for a little bit longer, but it might not necessarily be a good thing. Uh, meanwhile, one of the mineral patches back here has been mined out. This base is almost gone. Main base is empty. We're starting to see why Killizer's army is suffering in size. He's just got no money, folks. And it's not even about like, oh, his SCV count is low or not. His SCV count is fine. He just doesn't have any bases to mine from. So as he reestablishes a base, maybe we'll start seeing the income back in the red. Although, ironically, I guess, you don't really want to be in the red. Yeah, clean up some of these tumors will help with some of the engagements. My fear, though, is all these upgrades have gone into the ground. Uh, not enough Vikings in the sky to one-shot Broodlords, as we saw. Maybe enough to take on a Viper or two, but... Uh, as the transition for the Greatest Spire comes out, the number one thing Broodlords do is force unseaging on your tanks. The amount of friendly fire they do is more dangerous. And if the tanks are in siege, then you don't need Blinding Clouds. Like, there's a lot of awesomeness that comes for Lucira as a result of getting to Broodlord tech. And now Kelazur, like I've talked about how the game would be determined by Lucira, how it's going to respond to Mech, but realistically now the game's on Kelazur. The tides have shifted. Tide pods. Don't need them. Oh, that's my brain going ADD already. Uh, a couple more shots on the blue flame, pick off another few workers. Realistically though, these blue flame Hellions should be doing a lot more damage. I don't think is doing anything wrong, but for example, the fact that he keeps coming on the left side of the map, he never got to see that the gold base was reestablished. If he knew this, I'm almost certain blue flame Hellions would be up here. But more Vipers coming in, they're pretty much on full energy. Uh, I like the Parasitic Bomb, the Transformation Server out of it though. Yeah, that's kind of a cool trick Terran can do. Unsure if intended or creative use of game mechanics. <laughs> Yo, Red Ball 3, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub, my dude. Welcome back for two months. Ah, there we go. Now the Vikings are getting some good shots on the Vipers. They really started overextending. He wants to go for another one. Blind Cloud comes in. He's just going to land all the Vikings to be safe. Walk away. I'll have to pick him up again. However, it looks like uh, Hellion Runbys have caused most of Lucia's army, about half of it, to split. So he's happy to sacrifice some of this. He's got money. He's got to make some room for supply. I mean, 3k minerals in the bank, almost 2k gas. He's looking for an excuse to make Broodlords. So he sacrifices the army to do as much damage as possible. Oh my god, he just got a command center. Kelzer needs mules so bad right now. Uh, the main base is just getting compromised. Kelzer's really got to get on top of this, man. Armory goes down, denying... Uh, well, I guess he doesn't need upgrades, but if the second armory goes down, it's going to deny the ability to make Thors. Thors are not bad in the Broodlord uh, tango that's about to come, but man, I think Lucira has, well, not won this game yet, has secured his victory with this attack. This has done some devastating damage to Kellos, or in fact, even supply blocking him behind... Beyond repair, he can't afford to build depots, he can't afford to be supply blocked, and he can't afford to drop supply instead of mule right now with two CCs missing. Well, I guess only with one, excuse me, because he lifted the main over. But with a CC down, especially, my point still stands, you can't, you gotta use that energy on, on not dropping supply, basically. So he's gonna pull up everything and just go for it, big boy pants on. Hoping to catch a timing, but he's not. Broodlords are already out, there's no Vikings in the sky, we might just see an awkward tap out. Kelizer does not have an army fit to take this on. No, there we go. There's the unsiege. There's the immediate. Oh crap, it's Rude Lords. Ah, one single Thor, a couple of Vikings, everything going down. Ah, GG. Lucira does an excellent job tying up the series. Oh, that game, though. That game, though. That was a good game. I'm loving watching Kelzer play. Uh, but we'll see what the third and final map is in just a moment out of Kelzer. I'm going to pop to a small commercial break in the meantime. I hope you guys won't disappear. But if you do, have a great day. Either way, uh, uh, otherwise, ugh. Welcome back to game number three, guys. It is tied up one to one if you're just tuning in. Here for the BTSL bright and early. I want to quickly remind everybody, too, there's going to be another BTSL. It's going to be the last BTSL light. It's happening tomorrow. I'll have Maynard joining me for that one. Uh, and that's going to be some good times. And hopefully we'll see a lot of the same players come out and compete once again. But uh, top right side of the map. We've got to flop the, flip those around. There we go. It is the blue Terran player, Root Gaming's Kelazor. With his opponent in the bottom left, the red Zerg, Lucira. 
who has adjusted a little bit better as we saw in game two versus mech than necessarily game one. See if we can uh, keep the momentum rolling though. If Kalazir goes mech again, I wouldn't be too surprised. Black pink is another pretty standard map. A lot of the new maps have some gimmicks to them, but nothing too crazy. Uh, I think Eastwatch is probably my favorite, but that's to be determined still as we haven't seen a lot of games from them. I just will note quickly though that the map pool for this is the current season's ladder map pool, so all those new maps and what have you. But I'm going to replay this notification because I was really happy to get it. Uh, it's not going to replay. Come on. Do it. There we go. Diesel max power. Whoa, why is it not showing the emotes? <laughs> it's just spamming text. But yo, diesel max power, my dude. Thank you for the 200 bits. This game lacks Protoss. Man, or MCAN said. Yo, oh, I can't talk about that. Uh, yo, if you like Protoss, you like MCANning, uh, maybe just keep watching Base Trade TV. That's all I'm saying. But yo, uh, there's actually quite a few Protoss. In fact, in the bottom side of the bracket. Oh my god, guys. All right, so. Bottom side of the bracket, we got Rogue versus you Thermal squaring off in the round of eight. We got Hero versus Creator as well. Impact plays against what is likely Solar, or I don't know who Lero is. And then the winner of this, of course, goes on to fight against Innovation. Now, we can only catch one of the round of eight matches, so we'll probably follow these guys through to fight versus Innovation. But we'll be casting both of the semifinals, which means there is at least one guaranteed Protoss from the winners of Hero versus Creator. But yo, I, I like Creator plenty fine. I'm rooting for Hero though. Not just because of the pun, but because he's gotta be like one of my favorite Protoss players. Zest is pretty good too, but he's been playing, he's been keeping his head kind of low. I've been messaging Zest about playing in tournaments. Every time he says he's uh, not feeling up to it or he he's, doesn't want to play. So like, I'm not sure what's quite going on with Zest. Maybe he's just hoping that GSL holds out or something. I, I honestly don't know. But with Hero constantly playing at all of our events, it's hard not to love the guy even if you hate Protoss as much as I do. <laughs> as we'll, uh, we'll take a peek at those brackets again in a little bit, see where that updates to. This first series has gone a little bit longer than expected, but I'm not complaining. I love any time we get the opportunity for an ace match. Of course, the uh, prize pool as well has been brought up to $250 thanks to you generous souls. Most people using that free promo code, but gotta give some love to Laser SEQ as well as Phantom X, both donating $5 on top of the free code to that prize pool. Good stuff to see, man. There's no really cool rewards for this, and I hope we'll have, we will, I just wanna make this very clear, we will, and we have some really sick rewards planned out for the BTSL main season. Got some poster art, got some t-shirts being made, but uh, yeah, there's no, there's no rewards for this, just straight up hashtag passion for esports. And I've been all over the place talking, a lot of Zerglings got made, we should probably focus on this. Lucira, of course, not on the worst drone count, but his thirds later, his drone count's low. All for this one big attack that typically would do nothing to tear him, but in this one instance might work. No! Killzer gives up positioning on the ramp! Oh, the Hellions are starting to get surrounded, he's gotta find a choke, he's gotta get a couple more blasts off here. Before he loses too many of the Hellions. So far, so good, but oh, get almost caught in that ramp once again. This is so dangerous. Two more Hellions about to pop out. I think he'll hold on. Yeah, it's especially with the SCV pull, but my god, for Lucira, this was something that could have snowballed so badly if Kelizer was playing greedy. Luckily, Kelizer not playing greedy, though, playing almost, in fact, the same way he has every game so far. But, uh,. Oof, that got scary. If those had surrounded the Hellions, this could have absolutely snowballed to many SCV deaths. Maybe not game-ending SCV deaths, but a lot. So, good on Kelizer to hold. Lucira, though, might be regretting that. Keep in mind, guys, like I said, his third base comes down slightly later. His drone count is a little bit lower, all because of all the money and, more importantly, larvae he put into those Zerglings. Now, as Kelizer goes for the counterattack, well, Hellions will still hold up to be pretty strong. There won't be that many Zerglings because he's had to go back to droning. Kelzer knows this too. He's going to catch that drone transfer from Lucira, hitting up this base. He immediately has to pull those drones away. And while this goes on, of course, Banshee is dead set towards the main. But there is a Spore Crawler down, so shouldn't be able to stand there forever. 33 year sub. Oh my god. Phoenix 636. Thank you for the 33 years. I appreciate it, dude. Ah, uh, yeah, another Spore Crawler set up to the bench. She's gonna get deterred from that. Hellion's still waiting for the opportunity to go in. Couple Queeds are funny enough, scary enough to keep the Hellions from just rushing in, but as the Banshee draws them out of position, maybe? Nah, they're just gonna wait for the Hellbats, I guess. I didn't even see that armory come down. This will deal with the Lings a lot better.
I like the split, tries to get some on top of the drone line. Unfortunately though, unless these are Hellions, chasing them seems to be out of the question. The transfer comes in, he barely missed that too, but the drones get pulled back. Oh, that could have been so bad. Uh, these helmets are not trading out too poorly, but it's actually getting a lot of uh, Zergling kills. So, mineral for mineral cost here, and so being better for kills, they're with more Hellions on the way. Double Banshee's also heading towards that main, and there's no Queen here to defend. They were all pulled towards this base. The Hellions wrap around one more time. Drones are pulled. Nice reaction time out of Lucira. But reaction time doesn't matter when Banshees are hammering down on your main. Hellions start running around. Man, Kelisar is getting down and dirty. This might be too dedicated from him. I don't know. It's like to be determined. But he's taken a lot of... He's, he's killed a lot of workers, but kind of given up a lot in the process, too. Keep in mind to build all these extra Hellions. That's money you're missing out on, like, a 4th CC or your production or SEDs. And uh, the Banshees are probably going to go down here. Uh, red ladies. Uh, he just follows up with double four though. However, timing might not work out. I, I feel like Lucier really adjusted to this. Game one really caught him off guard with some timings. Game three has been a little bit scrappy as he's taken quite a few worker losses, but he's got Hydras out. And as I mentioned many times, and I'll reiterate once more, the Thor drops aren't stopped by killing the Thors. The Thor drops are stopped by killing the Metavax. So it's always way more scary when you're fighting a small amount of Hydras than a large amount of Roaches. Oh my god, how did that get turned on? <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. How long was that on for? <laughs> I thought I turned it off right away. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I can't hear it when it happens, obviously. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was supposed to just be for the uh, the, the sub shoutout. Did that not turn off afterwards? Oh gosh, I feel stupid. This is one of those things where I would, uh, I would turn it off permanently, but it's actually tied into my microphone right now, so I'd have to restart OBS to do it. So I'm just going to try and be more attentive. Uh, but yo, I hope that sounded interesting at least. I'm not going to pretend like it sounded good. <laughs> now it kept going. Oh man, uh, my, my face is turning red right now. That was a, that was a oopsie daisy is what that was. See, this is why I miss having a, a co-caster sometimes. Because they can tell me when I'm doing dumb stuff like that. I don't have to worry about not reading chat and missing it. Download and add the music to this Zemo cats. Dude! Saints Row was the shit. I ran around with a big purple diddle baseball bat. Those of you who never played it won't understand that reference, and that's gonna sound really fucked up, but uh, trust me, it was part of the game. <laughs> Oh! Barely doesn't get the Metavex, so he ducks in back here, but this is scary times now for Kelazur. Getting these out is not going to be an easy solution. Oh, this is so clever out of Lucira. This is so clever out of Lucira! Kelazur, you're about to get got! Okay, so that Metavex goes down and that's not so good. The Thor will take out the rest of the Hydras that were here, but while this goes on, what else is happening on the map? Backing on for Kelazur, he did set up a third base, which is uh, turning into that fourth base, which is nice. A lot of Hellions been made. Tanks good to go. I mean, this push is pretty scary, especially with that blue flame. Look at this. Tanks aren't even involved in the fight. Everything's dying to the Hellions. And anytime you trade out Hellions for Hydras, it's always a good trade. Blue flame is a hell of a thing, guys. It does so much damage when there's low upgrades on the field, and there are low upgrades on the field. This is not looking good for Lucira. I think we're about to see some hashtag four and hope your boys. Kells are pushing in. We got those Vipers out, but they don't have the energy to really be useful. And even if they do throw down Blind Clouds, most of the army's been killed. What can capitalize on this? And the answer looks to be nothing. Drones are getting pulled into it. The drone fight. Oh, no. <laughs> this is not good. I do think it's safe to say Kelzer has locked down this game. G, G, Kelzer, ladies and gentlemen. We'll advance on to the round of eight, where he's going to be one round away from prize money, but more importantly, fighting freaking innovation. <sighs> Actually, where's the voice changer, right? Because <laughs> now I'm innovation. The unstoppable robot Terran god. Uh, like I said, we're probably going to follow this series because it works out well. So this TBT into the semifinals. So for the rest of the cast, guys, the ship is going to be going down this route. It's a best of three, two more best of threes, and then a best of five to finish it all off. So we'll uh, play a quick commercial break here. I'm going to hopefully not fuck up any more audio stuff. And we'll go to uh, 
break while we set up this next series. So sit tight. When we get back, it's Kelzer versus Innovation. Thank you guys for tuning in.